Welcome back to maintenance for my 1984 Alfa Romeo Spider. So today I am going to change the shocks. I'm actually going to do all four, but I'll probably do this in two separate videos. Uh, one for the front and one for the back. So right now I've already got it on uh, some ramps here. And I think I'm a little bit paranoid just in case, but I don't want this falling on me. So I've got my blocks up here in front. It probably isn't going to go anywhere. The parking brake is on. I've also got the front blocked up on both sides for both uh, for both front tires. Anyway, so to access the uh, the shocks back here is a lot easier than I thought it was going to be from what I've seen online. First step is going to be to remove this carpet back here, which is just a couple of screws uh, over at the top. Hopefully it's not taped in. It shouldn't be taped in or glued in. If it is, I'll, I'll figure that out later. Uh, the reason you do that is because then you have access to these windows back here, inside trunk, uh, right up there. I don't know if I'll be able to see them that well. It's a little dark. Uh, but there's a couple of windows right over here. Uh, the shocks will come up through those windows. What you'd have to do is remove these nuts here. I'm going to do that later. Right now I've already started to remove the bottom nuts. And there's one on each side. The, the other ones over here. I might take out the uh, some of those devices, like the, uh, the gas capture thingy that I can't remember the name of right now. So down here, you, you see that we've got the shocks. Uh, they're inside the spring, but the nice thing is that you don't have to remove the spring. All you have to do is loosen up these bolts down here. Now the outside one is supposed to be 17 millimeters. Mine is. The inside one is supposed to be 19 millimeters. Mine also is. I saw online that there two, some people had two 17s, which was initially what I thought I was going to need based on the online uh, recommendations. Then I found somebody else said that they had 19, which mine also does. I believe that's the original setup. These are the original shocks. So it is time for a replacement. I've already loosened up the 17. I didn't have a 19 millimeter uh, ratchet uh, head, so I had to go buy one. And now I'm back, getting back into this. So I'm going to remove these, and then I'm going to go up top and remove the uh, the top panel, take out the carpet, and I'll be back with you guys in just a little bit. Alright, so I got the carpet removed from the back. You can see inside the window that's over there now. I also took off the rubber caps. Those are inside the, uh, the car at the moment. Uh, the bolts that hold this thing in here, the, that actually hold the, uh, the top of the, the, the shock in, those are a little hard to get to. I haven't taken this thing out yet. I might. It's not that complicated. I've done it before. I just don't really feel like it at the moment. Um, I was able to access both of those bolts from the other side. I loosened them a little bit, and just so you know, they are 13 millimeter bolts. Um, so that's what I guessed when I got in there, and I was right, thankfully. So pretty easy. You just need a ratchet with a uh, with an extension on it, and this was able to get inside from the uh, from the inside of the cab. Uh, you can see the carpet's not that hard to get out. It was just four screws on top. Uh, I, I didn't take out the whole thing, so it's still attached to the sides there. Uh, I didn't really see it, think it was that necessary. It's folded down, it's just fine. Uh, everything else should be accessible from in here. I don't think it's going to be much to deal. These doors, by the way, they're metal. They're held on by just two, uh, two little screws and, again, really easy to get out. Uh, mine was a little attached to the foam, so be a little careful when you're taking it off. Mine ripped it. I don't think it's going to matter that much because there's still foam on both sides and it's in the middle of the metal piece, it's stuck to that. Anyway, I'm gonna go take off the bolts on the bottom now. We'll see how hard these shocks are to get out. Might have to loosen or take off the top, we'll, we'll see. So I've come across something not too fun down here. Uh, so I have all the numbers right, the sizes and everything. Uh, the problem is that when I try to loosen the bolt here, I don't know if you can see that, the shock likes to, to twist, so it's really not coming loose at all. Yeah, you see it moving? Uh, the top is staying just fine. I thought that I could put maybe a, a strap wrench on it to keep it from moving, but what's moving is underneath this protective rubber like thing that's inside the spring there. So I have a little wrench that I've been using to hold this. Unfortunately, I can't use the ratchet with this, so I can hold, I, I use this little one quarter wrench to hold the end of the nut here, 
and then I'm slowly working it out with a three quarter inch because I don't have an actual 19 millimeter uh, solid wrench. Although honestly, they're only off by a tiny, tiny fraction. It's not even enough to strip the bolt. It's pretty much exactly the same size. So this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would to remove that, but at least you know that there's a little uh, workaround if you don't have any other means to get that to hold still. I think the conies would be easier because they don't have the uh, that rubber protective sheath on the bottom, uh, and that's what I'm going to be putting on this when I'm all done. Anyway, this is going to take a while. I'll be back. All right. So after a lot of that back and forth with the little wrench and the uh, three quarter inch wrench, I was able to get a vice grip to. Uh, grip onto the bar inside there. I just lifted up the boot and I found the metal piece. Uh, it was kind of hard to get it to grip right so that it um, wouldn't spin with a vice grip on it, but eventually I did and I was able to use the ratchet to pull out the rest. So now there's just the bare thing. Uh, I've pulled off the uh, the rubber grommet and the little metal cap. They're just sitting right over here on the ground. I should probably put them somewhere safe, but for now they're fine. Uh, anywho, now to take off the top and see if I can get the shocks to come out. Back inside the car, I loosened up the uh, the nuts. There's only one on each each side of this. There's one in the, the corner here and the corner on the back. This is all loose now. Uh, that was easiest to actually hand loosen. Uh, once I got the the uh, once I got them loosened with the with, with the wrench, it was just it was a lot easier just to spin them by hand. Now this is loose. It should pull straight up and come out. And there's the rubber. Thingamabobber, the rubber sheath that has been my, the bane of my existence, and it comes right out. There it is. So, removal of the shock, not too incredibly difficult. I've got some conies I'm going to put in here. These are the Spica that uh, came with the car, so these are over 30 years old now. Uh, no idea if these are worth anything. Probably not. I think I'm going to keep that little metal piece on top. This looks better than the ones that came with the conies. I think they're interchangeable. And I'll figure out which has the better of the rubber the rubber grommets. I was going to buy new ones, but they just they <laughs> were kind of hard to find. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna install the new one. See how hard that is before I take out the other one. But uh, I'll be back. So here's one of my replacement Coney shocks. I had an interesting time with this because I wasn't sure exactly how to uh, adjust it. I also changed out some of the rubber pieces. I used the nicer looking rubbers. They were, for the most part, fine to use, either one. Um, and I also used this metal piece from inside my car because it's nice and clean, whereas the one that came with the used Coney shock was all rusty. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to use this, I don't want to put that in my car, and frankly, I don't need to. Um, as far as tightening the rubber uh, grommet on top of this, the rubber uh, bushing, you want to tighten these until the rubber swells out to about the width of the uh, the metal doodad, which that's about where it's at right now. It's a little bit shorter, so I'll probably tighten it a little bit. And then um, eventually I'll double nut this on. There's a neat little trick I found online to that where you take one wrench, put it on the bottom, and you take the other one, put it on top. And instead of using both hands, you squeeze it with one, and that really tightens it up nice and tight. Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, if you do get a set of conies, the fronts are a lot easier to adjust, the back ones. You have to open this up all the way, and there's a there's a rubber donut with a slit in it that you take out, and then you can shove this all the way up and adjust it. Um, to adjust it, you once you take the donut out, or the rubber grommet, whatever you want to call it, the bump rubber, I think is what they call it on here, uh, you just shove it all the way closed, and then you'll rotate it counterclockwise to make it softer, and clockwise to make it uh, more of a firm ride. I'm going with softer because I don't think this needs to be super firm, I'm not racing it. I just want my car to stop bouncing around and be a little bit more comfortable. Uh, anyway, I'm about to put this back in. Should be pretty easy from here on out, especially now that I've figured out how to do everything. Hopefully that helps everybody else. All right, so I'm back in my car, and I'm ready to put my first of <laughs> my four shocks, and this is gonna take me all day. Uh, it just goes back in the way the other one came out. Uh, it should be pretty obvious which side is up, which side is down. It says so on the bottom of the Coney shock. Uh, when, with the ones that have the shielding like this, it should be upwards, so that if anything splashes inside it, it falls back out. This should just slide right down inside once I get it past that hose there. And now I just need to screw everything uh, down, put the rubber dude out back on, and I've got my brand new shock. Uh, the other side's going to be the same, so I'm not going to show you that. This is the uh, pretty much the last stage of uh, 
replacing a rear shock on an Alfa Romeo Spider. I just tried to install the, sh the shock in the back. Um, it went in really easily, the, of course, because I didn't extend it. Uh, again, knowing which direction is easy, it says so, top and bottom. And if it doesn't, the shield, like if it's like this, should be positioned in a way so that all this stuff will fall out if it gets water splash into it. Problem is, this is too short, so I need to extend it all the way before I can uh, put it through. And then, if it's too long, it'll crush. You know, it'll it'll shrink down a little bit. But right now, it's way too short, and it 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 doesn't reach the bottom, so I couldn't actually install it. So I'm gonna open it up, uh, which is pretty easy. You pull on it. And that, that should be more than enough. And now I'll see about getting it inside there properly. Just, you know, it's a little bit long, but I think it's going to be okay. We're pretty much in. And all I have to do is line up the hole in the bottom. I think I'm going to get underneath the car and see where I'm at for it. And the neighbor's dog is very mad at me. Anyway, uh, that's mostly in. I'm just gonna line it up, and then I'll uh, hand tighten down the two nuts on top. And then I'll go on the bottom, tighten everything really tight, put this in, and then I'll be done. All right, so I just finished tightening the top of this down. That's on a pretty pretty darn tight. This is done. All I need to do is put the little rubber thing on top of it, and it just that just gets pushed on. Uh, by the way, taking this off was a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. It's also not very easy one-handed because I'm holding the camera. Uh, but anyway, this just pushes on. I think I need to go around the other side make sure it's lined up properly, which it's not. Uh, there it goes. So that's done. The bottom I already started before I uh, finished tightening these down. So I just thought you should know that I'm using a strap wrench, which is making this amazingly easy to do. Um, it was a lot easier with this Coney than it was taking off that Spica. Uh, all I had to do was get a strap wrench wrapped around the Coney shock, which was super easy to do, and put on my little, or my big 19 millimeter, get that bolt in, and it tightens. I can hold this and just only move. Uh, so I'm going to do that, I'm going to tighten everything up, next will be the 17mm uh, once that's as tight as it can go, and this shock is pretty much done. So that's how you do your rear shocks, I think. Um, obviously, you know, take this as just one home mechanics version of it. I'm not saying that this is the right way to do things, this is just the way that I looked up online how to do things, and this is how it worked for me. Thankfully, uh, it's really not that complicated. Just took a little longer with the uh, learning curve. I think the second shock is going to go pretty quick, and the front shocks look like they're going to be a lot easier. I'll probably still do those tonight, but maybe tomorrow morning, depending on uh, if the sun starts to fade away on me. Uh, if we get to that, I'll start a video for that too. Anyway, good luck.